we're going to have a look at squaring and cubing when we need to combine like terms first. Let's start off by looking at something like 6y multiplied by z, all squared. We first look at what's being squared. Well, it's 6y multiplied by z that's being squared. So it's 6y multiplied by z multiplied by 6y multiplied by z. Everything there is just multiplied together. So we've got 6y multiplied by z multiplied by 6y multiplied by z. So we can just go ahead and do the multiplication. We get 6 times 6 is 36, and then we get y times y, y squared, z times z is z squared. So actually we can see that if we had 6y multiplied by z all squared, that squared, everything in that bracket is just going to be squared. So 6 squared, 36, and then of course you'll get y squared and z squared. So very easy, just everything has to be squared. Now, the question is, if we have a addition, a plus, adding two terms instead of just multiplying, will we end up with the same story? Well, we know 2y plus 3y, all squared, just means 2y plus 3y times 2y plus 3y, no problem. The question we're asking ourselves is, will it give us the 2y squared plus 3y squared. Can we just go and square each bit of the bracket? And that's a big question that we are asking ourselves. And hopefully you're thinking back to what we did when we looked at squares and cubes with just plain old numbers and saying, hang on, that didn't work. But let's have a look at it again with some algebra thrown in. So here we have a square and let's imagine that length over there is 2y and that length over there is 3y, well, then the length of the side of my square will be 2y plus 3y. So, what's the area of the square? Well, it's 2y plus 3y multiplied by 2y plus 3y. In other words, 2y plus 3y squared. And the question we're asking ourselves today is, is that going to be equal to 2y squared plus 3y squared? Well, let's remember what 2y, all squared, will be. Well, that'll just be the area of the square that has a side length of 2y. So that little red square there. And what will 3y, all squared, be? It's the area of the square that has a side length of 3y. In other words, this pink square. And you can see, if you take 2y squared, and 3y squared, the red square and the pink square, and you put them together, you certainly don't get the full area of the yellow square. And so the answer to our question is absolutely not. So what do we have to do to work out what 2y plus 3y all squared is? Well, what we need to do is we need to first add together 2y plus 3y to get that that total length is 5y. And then we can say the area of the square is that 5y all squared, which is going to be 25y squared. So a further example, if we want to do 7b minus 3b all cubed, because if we're adding or subtracting, we can't just apply the cubed to each term. We first need to combine like terms so that we get it to a single term. So 7b minus 3b is 4b and 4b cubed we can do nicely now. 4 times 4 times 4 is 64 and then we have b cubed. So with that addition or subtraction when we've got two terms in the bracket we first have to sort out our like terms to get to a single term and then we can cube. With division, we're going to actually have no problem at all. It's like the multiplication where we had no problem at all. This is just 8a over 3b multiplied by 8a over 3b. And we can just go ahead and say 8 times 8, right? 8 squared is 64a squared. And then at the bottom, we've got 3 times 3. That's 3 squared. That's 9b times b, b squared, right? So we can just easily apply it, right? We can just go... 8a squared, which gives me 64a squared, 3b squared, which gives me 9b squared, no problem whatsoever. The problem scenario is where you've got addition or subtraction, two terms in your bracket, and there you have to remember that you want to combine the like terms first, so you get a single term that you can then square or cube.